Let's talk about sex. Therapy conversations. Hello, beautiful. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm good. Have you missed the music? Yes. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. Everyone, here we are. We're on Signposts for Living with Dr. Kirsten Hunter and Kristen. My dear friend, Kristen Coggan, is here to um, enjoy this topic. And uh, you've just heard it for the first time. Yes. Let's talk about sex. Excellent. And that's why I said, I think you'll break out in song. <laughs> You're not going to? I, no, it's in my head. It's not I know, coming out. I, I could. I could easily, but I won't. I'll, I'll save you all. Um, and you just mentioned earlier that I probably should mention that I'm a psychologist. Yeah, do which that. I, which I don't tend to do, do I? Well, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Yeah. Okay, everyone, I'm a psychologist, 20 years experience, and we are here talking about lots of topics that come into the therapy room and today it's the therapy conversations about sex. Oh, this is the one that everyone wants to hear. I think so. <laughs> I think so. And you know what? I, you know me, I'm pretty, um, pretty prolific with writing. <laughs> I didn't know what you were going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Prophylactic. <laughs> no, prolific with what? We're talking about sex. That's true. <laughs> I was gonna, That's true. Where's this going? <laughs> and, and what I haven't told you is that, um, one of the non-fiction books that I'm, I'm in the process of writing yes. um, is, is about, it's called 50 Reasons Women Fake Orgasms. Right. Yeah. So what I've done is I've, I've had a bit of a cheat sheet and I've gone, <laughs> I've gone to my book and I've said, hey, let's just grab a few and have a okay. chat. Yep. You know, and we could be here for maybe 30 hours if we were we to could. talk through all of the topics, which we won't. Okay. Which we won't. But you know what? It was really interesting as I went through mm -hmm. these. I thought, okay, I'm going to pull out the ones that are probably um, have frequent flyer points. <laughs> <laughs> right, <-o. laughs> In my room. You know, honestly, the ones that come up all the time. Okay. And, and perhaps my favourite topics as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you know what? I have got, I've got, um, oh, you know, there's a small pointage of, a small percentage, <laughs> small percentage of people that come in and they say, "Okay, I'm struggling with regard to sex." Mm -hmm. But um, more likely, it's actually that people come and they talk about other areas, and then while we're at it, I've got this issue in the bedroom, or relationship-wise, or about my body, and then we end up talking about sex. Mm -hmm. So, sex is one of those ones that just comes up all the time, every day of my mm -hmm. working life. I I spend talking about sex. Mm -hmm. Um, in some form. So, you know, if I start to sound a bit kind of um, practiced, it's because I am. <laughs> <coughs> Excellent. <laughs> okay, what was your first reaction when I brought up the topic? Sex. This, oh, it could be, well, it's the, it could be anything, couldn't it? Like it's, that one word doesn't mean one thing necessarily. No, it doesn't, does it? No. No. So, no. yes. There you go. And, and the other thing that came into my mind was sometimes you want to know about my life experiences when we're on this podcast <laughs> and I'm a little bit scared. So just... No, you know what? I thought to myself, I'm not going to ask for a lot of personal disclosure on this one. That's good. Thank you very much. <laughs> but except for this question. Okay. <laughs> okay. Do you know the difference between a vagina and a vulva? Yes, I do. Oh, my gosh. Welcome to the minority of the population. What is okay. the difference? Oh, so I knew you were going to say that. Well, <laughs> your vagina is the bit that is in there. Right. That babies come out of and mm -hmm. things. Yep. yep. And the vulva is the folds of skin on the outside. Thank you. So why is it when we talk about male and female anatomy, what do we say? Penis, Penis and? Vagina. Why? Do you oh. see my point? No, I've missed it. You've missed it. Okay. Yes, so, okay. So, so when we talk about the male anatomy, we mm. talk about the penis, mm -hmm. right? So that's the part on the outside yep. that everybody sees. Okay, right And it's now. the part that gives the male satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about the female anatomy, mm -hmm. we talk about the vagina, mm -hmm. which is the internal. And you're right. Okay, let's just explain everybody. The vagina is the internal kind of shaft mm -hmm. that the penis goes into yep. and where babies come out of yes, and where there is absolutely no uh, sensory capacity. Is there not? There's no nerve endings up there. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. Okay, and that's don't my, doubt you. That's my issue. Right. There isn't. There isn't. Okay. Um, the nerve endings for women 
are everybody. The vulva is the outside area where we've got two layers of lips um, yep. on the vulva and we've got the clitoral area. And the vulva has more nerve endings than the penis. Well, I'm pleased about that. I know. Women win. They do. It's not a competition, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> right. So when right. we talk about female anatomy, yep. we're talking about the part that gives men pleasure. I get your point now. I have a problem with that. Okay, I get your point. Right, and this comes back from t- um, from language, uh, you know, back during the the very patriarchal era mm-hmm. when men were busy um, telling us what language to use for mm-hmm. women. Mm-hmm. So, really, women should be we should be saying penises and vulvas. Okay, well let's let's do that. Let's do that. Let's be <laughs> educated and actually talk about the female anatomy and the bit that matters and that feels good. Okay. So that's my first rant. Right. <laughs> rant over? <laughs> no, it hasn't. No, actually, I have finished ranting. The rest yep. of the things are actually client issues. That's okay. my issue. That's your issue. <laughs> right. It really, really is. Okay. Bit of a bit of an annoying well, thing. There you go. I've learned something. There you go. There you go. And did you know that the um, the nerve endings within the vulva was actually mapped out by an Australian? No, I did not. Yes, Australia owns the vulva. <laughs> what was his name? Barry? Female, thank you. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, I've presume. just crossed the line again. Jesus. Yes. Actually, I'm, I'm sorry. Her name escapes me, but um, I did once know it. And, um, yeah, she went and said, hey, let's go and map this out. Of course. It would have been a woman that Of course would do it that. was a woman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. And basically, if you think of a um, fishbone, mm-hmm. shape of a fishbone, and then mm-hmm. you put two more legs on it on either side, that's what it looks like. So I think of two fish bones put together. That's what the nerve endings of a vulva. Oh, okay, yep. All of them coming up to the um, yep. the clitoris, which is the top little point, which is like a little pea. Yep. Yeah, how about that? How about that? I know, I know. Okay, number one issue that we have coming through the door is female body image. Right, yep, that makes sense. I know. So there's this really interesting phenomenon where men can um, not like their bodies but be really comfortable in the bedroom Mm -hmm. and women don't like their bodies and they really are not comfortable in the bedroom. Yep. Huge problem. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I get it. Huge problem. And why are we like that? It's because of media and stereotypes and all that sort of thing, isn't it? Well, I think it's a really interesting question because um, men also have pressure to have the six pack, six pack, sorry, mm. and to look all that, but um, but yet they're actually pretty okay to go and have sex if that's not happening. Mm. Um, I think there's another layer to it. Mm. I'm, I'm not I'm not saying I have the answer there, mm. but it's definitely a pattern that's mm. a big problem. So we have a lot of women that come along and say, "Hey, I don't like my body." Yep. So I really don't want to get naked with my partner, and he tells me that he finds me really attractive, mm. but I don't believe it. Mm. And so we have this big red light and um, I, I mean, in session we spend a lot of time on, on body issues, on self-worth, on, on grounding in what actually really matters. Yep. And and, um, and it's fascinating that I have a lot of women who come in and they're, you know, they're vivacious, they're just like they've got their kind of their, their booty happening yep. and they're really confident. And then I have other women who come in and they're, you know, uh, very, very slender and they're not confident. Yep. So it's a really interesting conversation on that level as well mm-hmm. that it's actually to do with your headspace. Yes. Yes. So much of body image and that stuff yeah. is headspace. Absolutely. And then we're going to flick to something else that links with that, mm-hmm. what men want. Right. Yeah. So what do you think? I mean, what do you think women think men want? With regard to, I'm not talking about in a, in a, in a relationship, but with casual sex. With, with casual sex? Yeah, what kind of, what do you think, what do you think women think men want? I think that women think men want something equivalent to a porn star. Yes. Well, right, so we've got. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't think that. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. I'm talking about the gorgeous body, all the moves. Well, I. You know what? The bottle of baby oil. <laughs> well, that's very interesting. Um, what I actually hear coming through the door is that women think that 
Men want skeletal bodies. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Yeah, but not even not even that voluptuous ass and you know oh, breast okay. kind of thing. They just they just literally look at like body mass index, and it has to be oh. skeletal, and that's what they they basically think thin, thin, thin is what guys want. Okay. And and when I when I say that comes through the door, I mean all the time. Yeah, right. Then I talk to men. What mm-hmm. do men want? What do you think men want? I think men want someone who's enjoying themselves probably and into the moment and um, just going with it and not too concerned and hung up on those sorts of things. You nailed it. You totally nailed it. So men really love women who get into it, who really enjoy sex, who are sexually confident. Mm -hmm. But on a physical side, and I want to ground this because I don't mean to be so superficial, Mm. but I'm about to ground it. Mm. Um, What men want is something to grab. Yep. Actually, what men talk about is they, you know, when they talk to me and I, I feel like I'm in a confessional, I feel like I don't mm. say anything, um, they say, I love grabbing an ass. That's pretty much what I hear often. And they really talk about grabbing women, the texture, the feel, the opposite of the skeletal that the female thinks. Yeah, right. So we've got these two worlds that are not communicating and understanding each other. And if women could understand what men like instead of presuming what men like and Mm -hmm. trying to live to what they think men want. Mm -hmm. Well, how has that gone so wrong in the evolution of the human race? Well, media, right? Yeah. So we've got females that are looking at media and it's all about being kind of models and skeletal and all this sort of stuff. And they go, that's what men look at. That's Mm -hmm. what men want. And I don't know if there's a difference between what men look at and what men want. I don't know. But... um, there's this massive mismatch happening. Mm. And um, and then there's the fact that, you know, sexual confidence is really, really, really a massive turn on. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I've seen – you see that. Like you see people – you see that in action. If you watch people, yeah, you see that in action. Yeah. It's the girl that's confident. It doesn't really matter. No. And it's so attractive, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Absolutely. But – I, I don't mean to say that we're all going around and we're kind of like, you know, have a shopping trolley and we're looking for what we're going to reach for. Um, the truth is, the truth is, um, majority of people are looking for that life partner yep. and they're looking for that sexual intimacy. And it's within, within that intimacy of a relationship that then people have got these skewed ideas with women thinking they need to be skeletal Mm -hmm. and men wanting curves and men wanting the women and men wanting the women to realise they're wanted Mm. and the women not knowing. Oh, my gosh. Mm. It's exhausting. Mm. It's like we're just going around blind. And it would be so common. Oh, my gosh. So common. I I wish that just for one day everyone could read everyone's minds. (laughs) (laughs) It could be a bit, you know, a bit Mm. confronting on many fronts, but if that happened... If that truly happened, women would just drop this profound insecurity and realise yep. how men find them so desirable. So just just skip it. It's not true. Yeah. So anyway, I might be I might be back to having a little preach on that one. Okay. I look forward to it. <laughs> okay, here's another one. You ready? Oh, yep. Women who are not comfortable receiving foreplay. Happens all the time. Really? Absolutely. Absolutely. I have to say it is a bit of a generational issue. Which generation? Which, (laughs) clearly you don't relate, which is great. (laughs) Says Crystal, (coughs) who was not going to (laughs) disclose. No, seriously, we have a lot of women. Um, Typically, it's probably from the 40s on. 40s, 50s. Under 40s, they tend to be much more open to that. Yep. But they're just not comfortable in saying, okay, this is my body and mm. I, it's lovely for me to enjoy it and this is what I like. I think that's a time thing. Well, not if, not if people have been in relationships where they've kind of put that to the side and then they don't know how to reintroduce it mm-hmm. and they have to initiate reintroducing it and they're not in any way confident and their partner's kind of gotten familiar and, you know. Yeah, okay. So it's, it's really an issue with, um, and again, communication and self-discovery as well, mm. which brings us to another topic of masturbation. And I am a huge advocate of – we're talking about female sex a lot here, aren't we? Rather men, but we're about to get there. Um, <laughs> uh, a lot, a huge advocate of women learning to masturbate if they have never masturbated. Right. And is, I, yeah. Is, 
How many people come through your door that have never masturbated? A lot. <laughs> I wish you saw Kristen's face there. A lot. No, no, seriously. I have women who are in their 60s who have never had, a ma- ha- never had an orgasm. Never. Poor loves. Well, well, yes, I know. Because they've lived in an era where it's selfish mm-hmm. to want to have sexual mm. gratification, where sex is about intercourse with the vagina, not the vulva. Right. Do you think that comes back to mm. men who are useless at it too? Well, I think it comes from a, ba- a lack of education, a lack of awareness of foreplay. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I mean, you say to men, you say to women, what is sex? And, you know, I can, I can really, well, quasi-confidently, based on how they're presenting, tell you mm. what their answer is going to be. Okay. And there's a lot of people that say sex is intercourse. Mm -hmm. Now, only one third of women experience orgasm from intercourse. Mm -hmm. So what we have is if sex equals intercourse, we have two thirds of women who will never have an orgasm in their lives. Okay. Hence our issue. Mm -hmm. And if women aren't comfortable with, with, with putting forward foreplay and if their husbands haven't been educated or they don't prioritize it, Mm -hmm. um, then... We just have a, a dead end and hence why they come and we start talking about this, mm-hmm. you know. And, and it's really interesting when I start saying, okay, hey, this is how you can get a uh, vibrator. You can get them online. You don't need to go into a sex shop. Do they fall off the couch when you say that? You know what? They're usually pretty desperate um, to have a bit of a change. They're probably curious. They're probably very shy, mm-hmm. very timid um, and kind of – Guarding their curiosity, not mm-hmm. wanting to show it fully, but yeah, some have fallen off the couch. Yep, twenty years, lots of couches. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so basically, we've got to slow it down, and the female has to learn where the where the orgasm comes from. Mm-hmm. That sex is is for the two thirds of women. It's about foreplay, mm-hmm. and then after she's experienced an orgasm mm-hmm. for those two thirds, then they're able to go and have intercourse. And perhaps have another orgasm. Mm-hmm. So women have it over men. They can have two or three orgasms. Mm-hmm. Men, um, they are pretty much about intercourse for orgasm. So it really is about putting out the welcome mat and then and then <laughs> going all the way with sex. Yeah, so it's really interesting. What is sex? It's about foreplay and then intercourse for two-thirds of women. Mm-hmm. For one-third of women, it's it can be just about – uh, intercourse if they choose or foreplay for fun if they choose whatever mm-hmm. so yeah there's just a incredible um, lack of awareness an incredible um, stunting of growth mm-hmm. yeah yep so there you go <laughs> yeah, so when people say how's your day at work i'm like oh busy <laughs> <laughs> it's great though isn't it it's so good liberating people it really is it's really yeah. exciting yeah I mean, I even talked with them about what sort of vibrators to get, where to get them, what the websites are. How do you know all this? Well, I had to find out, didn't I? Absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, the favourite ones, yes. by the way, are the, yeah, of course. <laughs> are the small, the, because vibrators historically were made for men. Right. From, sorry, from men. Men made vibrators. Okay. And... Um, <laughs> Yes. And they were made for um, for vaginal penetration. Yes. And then uh, women came along and said, hey, actually we need them. We use them for the outside, not the inside, yeah. actually. Um, and so then there's been this kind of move towards clitoral stimulation. Mm-hmm. And so pretty much vibra- vibra- help me, vibrators are pretty much the shape of an A, what sort of battery, A2? A? Double A. Double A, thank you. Mm-hmm. Double A battery. Mm-hmm. Um, they can fit in your handbag. I had one client who had that had it kind of go off on a plane <laughs> and take the batteries out. You shouldn't actually be flying with batteries. Oh, you should not. No. Um, yeah, so anyway, quite small and it's purely for the, the clitoris and that's that. So nice and simple. Yeah. Too easy. I know, I know. We could have a whole podcast about sex aids. We could. We could, although that's probably the punchline. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now, the next one is uh, communicating with partners mm-hmm. about what you want. Yep. What are your thoughts on that? How do you think couples go with saying, this is what I want, this is what I don't want? 
um, I reckon, well, it would depend. Every couple would be different, but yeah. you would think new couples would probably be a bit shy perhaps at first. Perhaps, perhaps. I and think- then I'm going to get it wrong, aren't I? It's not what – and then old married couples, like you just say what you want, don't you? <laughs> not that I'm <laughs> revealing anything about myself. I <laughs> – Oh, there you go. No. <laughs> Done it, got it wrong, didn't I? <laughs> Actually, it is usually the other way around. Yeah. And, and we can't generalise, right? Yeah. But yet I'm about to. Mm-hmm. Um, typically, it's a generational thing. Okay. The younger generation are far more open to communication. The females have an understanding that the, their bodies are important, that they yeah, want right to enjoy I. themselves. They're yep. far more liberated. And we're really going into the, um, the older parent, grandparent category where they just really, they're just muted in their capacity, they really, really struggle with being able to say, I think, again, goes back to the issue, they don't sometimes know what they want. Okay. Yeah, so it really is about helping people to learn about their bodies and then to go, it's okay to tell your partner what you want. How is she going to know? How is he going to know? Yeah. And, um, you know, I think it's only fair, isn't it? If, you, if you're wanting someone to to kind of fit with what your your goals are, what you what you hope, yep. then... Um, you have to tell them, otherwise they're not a mind reader. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. You have to be clear and upfront. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Oh, how are you going? Great. <laughs> <laughs> you go, go home and say, guess what we talked about. Yeah, I can't wait till we're playing this in the car with the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Which you will be. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Okay, now where are we going to go next? Okay, can we go a bit... A bit psychological. Okay. Well, right. seeing that you're a psychologist, well, that's a good, that's a good thing to do. <laughs> no, but this is like this is like now about the actual um, the the push and pull that happens. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is super common as well. So the woman is not in a good place. Either the relationship's not really on cue. Yep. Or she's not feeling connected with her body. She's not confident in her body. Or she's just too busy running around like a mad chick trying to be a mum and trying to do yep. everything. So she's, sex is not a priority for her. Yep. Um, so when the man comes and kind of wants to initiate sex, mm-hmm. uh, she is wanting to say, yeah, I don't want to be doing that. Mm-hmm. And so therefore she thinks in her head, I don't want to encourage him. Mm-hmm. So what she then does is every time he has affection, mm-hmm. she pushes him away. Mm-hmm. Um, now the problem is that, he might be initiating affection because he's wanting to, you know, have a bit of like suggestion for sex, okay? Mm-hmm. But he might just be suggesting affection because he loves her, because he just wants normal everyday affection, just, you know, passing in the mm-hmm. hallway. And so because she becomes almost hyper vigilant to not encourage sex, mm-hmm. she ends up shutting him down just in their relationship with their intimacy. Yep. And so then he starts to feel really rejected. Yep. And someone who's rejected in a relationship, they aren't really going to be given their all in the relationship. Mm-hmm. So then he starts to withdraw, become grumpy, mm-hmm. become resentful. Yep. And so then <coughs> any relationship issues they had are... Amplified. Amplified, yes. And he doesn't understand it's because of perhaps her issues in the first place. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's just feeling personally rejected. Yep. So this is a super common issue. I would think it is. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a fun one. <laughs> yes. So how do we fix that, doctor? <laughs> yeah. Well, we need a couple of hours on that okay. one. Okay. But no, that's really interesting. So then basically once we can get to the point where everyone understands where their headspace is at, yeah. how they're feeling, she doesn't understand he feels rejected. Mm. She thinks that he's just frustrated he's not having sex. And he's like, I don't care about sex. My wife is pushing me away. Mm. And um, he doesn't understand that she's not feeling connected in the bedroom and she's not feeling, you know, comfortable in her body. Yep. Or she's just really stressed by, you know, getting behind in the bills. Mm. So, it, again, sex is so much about communication. It's headspace. Isn't it? It is incredibly headspace. Mm. Yeah. And then, here we go a bit further, if we take that situation, if the man is perpetually rejected... Yes. He starts to have self-worth issues Mm -hmm. and then we have that as a whole separate person presentation. And I think that often women don't really appreciate how damaging that is for men. 
I agree with that, yep. Yeah. What What are your thoughts there? Because um, a male's capacity to be a great lover is quite significant to his ego. And I'm just, yeah, as you're talking, I'm thinking about how much of that is okay though. Like if we're worried... If we're worried about using terminology vulva versus vagina, mm. why are we worried about men and their egos when it comes to sex? <laughs> what? What do you mean? We care a lot. We care a lot about men and their egos. Okay. They're okay. important. What do you actually mean? Well. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're not a man hater. No, I'm you not a man. You love men. I love men. Yeah. But uh, isn't it okay like if I, I understand that having sex and having that intimate relationship with their partner is really important for men and that's how they feel connected. Yeah. And to me, remembering people, I'm not the psychologist here. <laughs> <laughs> that, no pressure. And that women don't necessarily need it as much to feel intimate and connected with their partner. Is that making sense? We'll come back to that, yeah. Okay. So... If a woman's not feeling connected to herself and comfortable with her body and she's worrying about being behind the bill, so sex is the last thing on her plate when she falls into bed at the end of the day. Yeah. But it might hurt his ego. Mm. Where's the balance in that? Well, I think that the balance is both are important. Okay. Yeah. It's not one more than the other by any stretch. And if they both understand where they're both at and then they can start to, you know, care and prioritise and get – supporting each other and working out a, a win-win situation yeah. that's that's the goal yeah yep completely yeah absolutely and, and i just got a bit hung up on the terminology there that's all good <laughs> i love it i love it but you know actually that's a really good segue and honestly we're gonna have to stop the conversation before i get through half of my you know oh, part my wish two. list part two <laughs> yeah part two three four five <laughs> <laughs> yeah all year um and and it's really really interesting what what okay you talk about frequency of of wanting sex for mm-hmm. men and women there, let's go there okay um so basically it's a myth that men have a higher sex drive than women right um but the reason that myth has come to be i think is because of um culturally this whole issue of men kind of being studs if they're into the whole sexual side mm-hmm. and women um, not celebrating their sensuality and thinking it's selfish there if they're wanting to have their needs met. So that's really complicated. But um, within there, I think um, when men can um, men can be uh, more flexible with when they're in the mood, mm-hmm. whereas women can need to have the stars aligned. They need yeah. to feel more connected with themselves, more connected in the relationship, more in a good mood. Um, it's not that men can have sex any time, but I think women well, they are. they can. Well, maybe. But women are more fussy with regard to just feeling that the stars yes. are aligned, you know. Yes. Um, and, and it's really interesting with what, what you get out of sex psychologically mm. because obviously there's the bond and connection and you're wanting your partner to enjoy sex. Mm. And if your partner is really into sex, that turns you on enormously because you're feeling really desired and it's a mutually enjoyable thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, men really enjoy feeling like they're great lovers, mm. um, whereas you don't hear that from women so much. Women really will want to feel desired. True. And, um, and it's not that men don't want to feel desired and it's not that women don't want to be great lovers. But if you really look at the core messages that come out Mm -hmm. um that's really interesting and i think that's fascinating if we get all anthropological about it right if you don't mind no Um, i don't mind you don't mind so men being kind of like the the doers the hunters the masters you know the you know um and um that sense of mastery being so so critical you Mm -hmm. know if we have um a little boy come along we say oh aren't you clever aren't you strong we have a little girl come along and our society says, isn't she beautiful, mm. you know? So there's all these social messages that come really early. And so women are socialised to want to feel prized, to want to feel desired. Yes. I'm not saying that's a good thing. I'm not advocating no, for that. No, <laughs> But there's definitely gender issues. Mm. And I don't even want to get in the whole issue of men, masculinity, femininity, because we both have masculinity and femininity, femininity male yes. and female, and we need both. And then the whole issue of where you are with your gender Obviously, people can be, you know, more masculine, more feminine in their actual sense of their gender, 
yes. and um, the whole gender neutral conversation as well. So we're making broad statements for the sake of conversation. Yes. But we're not being insensitive to the middle ground. Mm-hmm. And, and also men have got men and women have got more in common than they do different. So I just want to qualify that. Okay. I'm not trying to be politically correct. I really mean it. Okay. Does that no, make I sense? Yeah, no, I understand that. Yeah, yeah. I understand that. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh, how are we going? Okay, I think we're going to have to go. Oh, I'm going to have to pick one more. Let's pick one more. Okay. Oh, how oh, it's really hard to pick. I've got a list here and I'm really, really fussy. Okay, I, can I pick a dark one? Sure. <laughs> no, seriously, this one comes up all the time. Okay. All the time. I have uh, couples that come in, mm-hmm. right? And it comes out that the man has been watching a lot of pornography Mm -hmm. and doing a lot of masturbation. Yep. And the woman doesn't necessarily know that. But this comes out because as a couple, he has started to avoid having sex with her. Ooh. Yeah. He's pulled back. He's not initiating with her. He's avoiding Mm -hmm. um, completely. So we're getting to the point of like shut down. And so she starts to feel... That what, are you cheating on me? Mm. Do you not love me? Am I not desired? Mm-hmm. Ouch! Um, and then they get to a point of conflict. Um, often she will start to look through his phone and try to find out what's going on because mm-hmm. it's really peculiar behaviour. And um, then before they come and see me, it comes out that he's been really delving into a lot of pornography and mm-hmm. doing a lot of masturbation. And then it comes out that when he, they go to have sex, he can't maintain an erection. Ah. There you go. Super common. Two, two, two um, sessions in the last week on that topic. So a lot. And um, now the woman's not feeling desired. Yeah. If a man is not able to get and maintain an erection and have a um, ejaculation, he feels incredibly yes. demasculinated. That's a big problem, yep. which then can be a mental block for getting back in the bedroom. Yep. So it's a really big issue. And and any 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 guesses what's going wrong there? Again, hot seat. <laughs> this, what's going right? <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> what's going right? I love it. Um, yeah. What do you think? What do you think? I, I'm just trying to work out why he can't stop it. Stop just what? Like his porn addiction and masturbating all the time, which is affecting his ability. Yeah. Well, 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 okay. So um, often there's been a conflict within the relationship okay. and there's some understanding that he needs to probably stop that. Okay, yeah. Or reduce that. It's up <laughs> yeah. to the couples what they think. But um, basically the punchline is really simple mm-hmm. and that is that he is masturbating, which involves a lot of um, strong friction with mm-hmm. regard to the, um, the ah, penis, yes, right? Yes, yes. So then the penis starts to feel that that is, is what he normal. needs. That's normal. That's what he needs okay. for him to um, experience an orgasm. Yeah, no, I wasn't going down that track, but that makes sense. Mm. And, um, and so then when he has sex with his partner with regard to the vagina um, or even her um, wanting to kind of do foreplay with him, it doesn't have the same sensation, so he doesn't have the erection. So it's not intense enough. No, no, it's not. And um, it's really interesting when the, the women say, what? How do you come back from that? Well, you just give it time. Okay. You just give it time. And the women say, you know, it's because you are attracted to the pornography, pornography, not me. Yeah. And the man says, you know, that's not true. I'm really sexually aroused by you, absolutely, but it's just not happening. So it's actually to do with the sensory issue. So basically he needs to just hands off for a while, <laughs> hands behind your back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just take a bit of time. And basically um, the penis gets back to a baseline where it, it goes back to enjoying the sensations of intercourse and the female with what she's able to do as well with um, foreplay in there as well. And then they're fine. So it's quite extraordinary how common this is and how simple the solution is, mm. but people don't understand what's gone wrong. And because they're so deeply, you know, personalising the hurt of reaching for pornography, the hurt of the woman feel, feeling rejected and the man feeling like, you know, oh, my gosh, my my, mm. my body is, is you know, uh, betraying me. Yeah. Mm. So anyway, I wanted to throw that one in because it's um, a curveball but common. I like that one. Do you I don't really? know why. <laughs> 
<laughs> you it intrigued I me. I don't know if like is the right word. Well, it interested me. I just like I just like when um, you know, people come in, I say, Okay, we can sort that today, you'll be fine. And they go, What? Mm. You know, and um sure enough, no problem because, you know, it's all education and there's so much of sex is about communication, education, understanding, <coughs> mm-hmm. and yet it's a topic we don't really talk about depending on the age and generation. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Well, there you go. There you go. Very, very, uh, I'm going to stop myself now. Yes. Stop, we keep going. Kirsten. Stop. We can do Shush. another one another day. Okay, part two coming up. Yeah. Continuation. All right. Well, my yeah. beautiful, will you, do you mind doing the little sure. where to find me? Yep. Okay, kirstenhunter.com is Kirsten's webpage if you want to find her there. Facebook, she's Kirsten Hunter author. Instagram is the same, Kirsten Hunter author. Her Twitter handle is Kirsten Hunter AU. YouTube channel is Psych in Your Car. And podcast, Signpost for Living with Dr. Kirsten Hunter. If you've enjoyed if you've enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe to hear about more intriguing interviews and topics. You sound like one of those tally workers. Yeah. <laughs> it's my hypnotic voice. I'm oh, trying to hypnotize it. It's everyone. not working. <laughs> See you, darling. Thank Bye. you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>